I inherited Point Pine Oaks from my grandfather after my father wanted nothing to do with it. I, on the other hand, was broke, and I needed a place to stay and a job, and, well, beggars can't be choosers. So that's the answer to the question that I get asked any time that I'm out and about on the streets of our well, town. How on earth did you get stuck with that place? Everyone could see what Point Pine Oaks is, which is an apartment building that is six stories tall with 12 apartments on each floor. The outside of the building looks pretty normal, just a brick building at the end of Rare Road, which is a cul-de-sac that contains no other buildings on the street except for Point Pine Oaks. My grandfather bought the building in late 2013. It's been abandoned for over three decades, and the town was eager for someone to buy it. It became his passion project, and he fixed it up in July of 2014, and the building soon became the biggest apartment building in all of Point Pine. Any resident of Point Pine knows that the Oaks are anything but normal, however. For starters, no one ever decides to move in. If people want an apartment, they had to go all the way to the opposite side of town where the apartment complex is. See, people don't move into the Oaks, they just kind of appear. Every 13th of the month, a new apartment appears until each floor has 12 of them. And then, the following year, a new floor appears to accommodate the next 12 apartments. Oh, and I suppose I should also mention, none of the residents are human. Uh, well, at least, um, not normal living humans. My grandfather made it very clear to me that humans do not live in Point Pine Oaks, with the exception of the owner, which is now me. He never explained to me why humans are not allowed in the Oaks, and I never really asked because it just it felt kind of like the kind of rule that you follow without asking any questions. The entire first floor houses people who have died outside of the town. See, anytime a prior resident of Point Pine dies, they wake up again here, in Point Pine. Usually they're put in some secluded house up on the mountains, but for reasons unknown, they all ended up here at the Point Pine Oaks in 2014. The second floor houses the creatures with the eyes that are too wide, teeth that are too sharp, and skin that is too green. They first appeared in Point Pine in 2015, and have been in charge of the farmer's market since. They're relatively nice. They tend to mind their own business, but that doesn't mean that they don't still freak me out every time I see them in the building, with their incredibly long limbs dragging the floor. On the third floor is where the collectors live. The lead of the collectors is a ten-year-old Mary Lou Birmingham. Mary Lou is the one who collects children's teeth. Of course, she doesn't take them right out of their mouths, that would be horrifying. She sneaks into their homes after their baby teeth fall out and take them from under the pillows instead, like the Tooth Fairy. Most of the collectors are children, with the exception of Old Man Jones, who is, you know, an old man. Uh, some of the children collect dead bugs. Others collect less unsettling things, like flowers. But some collect the dirt from graves in the cemetery. On the fourth floor live all the people who died in 2017, when the bell tower appeared in the Windsor Park. Nobody ever figured out what the deal was with that bell tower. But exactly 12 people died that year as soon as they saw it. You know, once the people of Point Pine picked up on the pattern, they just stopped going to Windsor Park. Of course, after that, the bell on the tower would just ring every month and still manage to kill more people, but that's a different story. On the fifth floor are the invisible vampires. But uh, we don't talk about them. The sixth floor appeared this year. And so far, the tenants of that floor were not of one specific species, and they don't seem to have anything in common. The first family to appear has no mouths and communicate by somehow talking inside my head. In February, one of the sacrifices from the Point Pine Parade showed up. In March, it was a headless man. April brought a family of kukuis that almost made me have a heart attack the first time I saw them. They were by far the most horrifying residents of the building. Their huge red eyes that rattled around in their skulls and their decaying black skin that was crawling with maggots. On opening their mouths, the building shook with a horrible screeching sound that was like nails on a chalkboard at 600% volume. In May, a seemingly normal-looking family moved in, which terrified me just a bit more than the Kukuis had, until they invited me to dinner and I watched their lower jaws drop to their shoulders as each one ate an entire raw chicken in one bite. June brought a demon, who would routinely set fires in the building, but other than that, it appeared to stay out of everyone else's way, and last month brought the Wendigos, which were by far the hardest to deal with. We had to come up with an arrangement that they would only eat the undead folks on the first floor, since they would just wake up in the apartment again the next day, and therefore, they wouldn't technically be hurting anyone. Today, the new apartment didn't appear until noon, 
this was odd because they usually appear right at midnight on the 13th. I stood at the 6th floor, staring at the empty wall until a door suddenly appeared. Apartment number 68. I took a few breaths to prepare myself for whatever hideous monster would answer the door, and then I lifted my hand to knock. Coming! Someone called from inside. I heard footsteps to approach, and then the door opened up in front of me. Hi! There was a woman standing in the apartment. She looked normal enough, tall, blonde, with a tattoo of a rose on her left forearm. Uh, hi. I'm the owner of the building, the landlord. My name's Eric. I extended my hand out, bracing myself for some sort of heat or coldness or shock. I'm Gwen. Nice to meet you. She shook my hand with a strong grip. It was, uh... Normal handshake. But I wasn't going to relax just yet. I needed to give it a few minutes to know what exactly these new residents were. No, oh, come in. I'll introduce you to my family. I slowly followed her into the apartment. I looked around. It seemed pretty normal. Then again, all the apartments seem normal. It's a thing that lives inside that isn't normal. Hey guys, come out here! Quinn called into the apartment. Would you like some water? She asked. Oh, uh, no thanks. I replied. I turned to the sound of footsteps to see two kids and another woman walk out into the kitchen. This is my wife, Laura, and our kids, Kimberly and Christopher. Nice to meet you, Laura. Sh Laura stuck out her hand, and I shook it. Again, it was normal. I'm Eric. I'm the owner of the building, I replied. Nice to meet you. There was a brief moment of awkward silence. So, uh, uh do, do you have any questions? I asked. The kids took off as I stood there with Gwen and Laura. Oh, yeah. So, what are the rules? Are we allowed to, you know, paint the walls, hang stuff up? Gwen asked. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can decorate the place however you want, I replied. Awesome, she exclaimed. Uh, uh, so, so, if you don't mind me asking, um, uh, what are you? I asked, fidgeting with my hands. Excuse me? Or asked, you know, uh, what are you? I, I, I don't, I don't mean to be offensive or anything, I just, I like to know. Laura and Gwen exchanged glances. Like, lesbians? Are you allowed to ask that? Gwen asked, narrowing her eyebrows. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, like, you know, what are you? I, I know you're not human. Laura laughed. Not human? What are you talking about? What do you think we are? Like, Magical creatures? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I mean, uh, your neighbors are Wendigos. There's a family of Kukui down the hall. I pointed out the door. Is this some kind of a joke? Is, is it because we're new? Gwen asked. Uh, no, I replied, confused. Uh, well then, we're just regular humans. Laura chuckled awkwardly. I stared at them. Haven't you ever seen humans before? No, no, I'm mean, not a regular one, at least not, not in this building. Okay, now you're freaking me out, Gwen said. D do I know where, you, do you not know where you are, I asked. Well, we're in Colorado, right? Laura asked. No, this isn't Colorado. What do you mean, where are we then? Point Pine, I replied. Where? Gwen asked. You're in Point Pine, it's a small town, uh, middle of nowhere. Laura ran to the window in the living room and pulled up the curtains and gasped. What is it? Gwen asked, turning around. The window had a view of some of the buildings down below, along with a giant sign right outside. Welcome to Point Pine. Population. Unknown. I... I don't understand. Yeah, me neither. How do we get here? Gwen asked. I shrugged. I don't really know how people get here. They sort of just show up. Okay, then how do we get to Colorado? Laura asked, backing away from the window. You don't, I replied. What do you mean? I mean? You can't willingly leave Point Pine once you're here. Everyone who leaves gets banished. Even then, when you die out there, you just you know, you wake up here. And you're stuck again, I replied. Gwen sighed and Laura ran her hands through her black hair. So, you don't know why we're here? Laura asked. I shook my head. If you're really just human... This can't be good. After a few minutes of silence, I left the apartment and decided to go outside to get some fresh air. I stepped onto the elevator and pressed the button to the first floor. I got off and made my way down to the doors. 
stopping as I reached out to open it. I looked down at the watch on my wrist. It was still noon. That wasn't possible. I'd been up in the apartment for at least 20 minutes, but that wasn't the only thing that was wrong. It was pitch black outside. I couldn't even see the sidewalk right, right outside the door. A giant tree that was a few feet in front of the building. I pressed my forehead against the glass, squinting to see if I could make out something in the darkness. Suddenly, someone crashed into the glass, causing me to jump back at least a few feet in fright. Holy hell! I grasped. Hey, open the door! I walked closer and realized that I recognized the person who was outside. It was Lee. Everyone knew who he was since he lost his eyes to the Point Pine Parade years ago. Lee? I asked. Open the door! I had heard that he had gotten his eyes back at the farmer's market. And now that I was seeing him, I could see that it was true. I reached out to open the door, but it was stuck. I tried again, pulling on the door as hard as I could, but it didn't budge. It's stuck, I said. Suddenly, Lee went flying backwards, and I watched, and the darkness lifted, and the sun came out again. I looked down my watch again. Hmm, still noon. When I looked back up, I found myself standing in the hallway of the sixth floor again, as apartment number 68 appeared in front of me once again. I reached out and knocked. Coming! Someone called from inside. Footsteps approached, and the door opened in front of me. Hi! Gwen? I asked. Yeah, who are you? She asked. Uh, Eric. We just spoke, I said. I'm sorry, uh, you must be confused. You must have me confused with someone else. I didn't reply. I stared into the apartment as Laura and the kids came out. That was at least an hour ago. But the same chain of events keeps repeating every few minutes. And the time has not moved past noon. I don't know how to undo it. I don't even know what it is. I'm pretty sure. I know it's causing it. Humans shouldn't live in Point Pine Oaks. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to say thank you for watching today's video. I want to try to wrap this video up quick, so I'm going to let you know about a couple of things real quick. First one is, I'm going on tour. If you want to check out more information about that, head over to creepypasta.shofetti.com. That's creepypasta.shofetti.com. If you want to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and if you'd like to buy some nice warm tea for a dark and stormy story time, check out etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. Sweet dreams, kids.